want to code with Temi, your go-to resource for mastering software engineering and machine learning. So guys, this is Temi once again, and I am here to guide you through the exciting world of programming and artificial intelligence. Today we'll be diving into the core principles that form the foundation of robust software design. We will explore concepts like the solid principles, unlocking the secrets to creating code that's not just functional, but also elegant and maintainable. So join me as we embark on this learning journey together, empowering you to become a proficient software engineer and machine learning enthusiast. So once again, welcome to our empowering guide on building robust Python applications using solid principles. So in this video, we we'll explore the fundamental principles of solid design and how they can empower your Python group programming skills to the next level. So Python has emerged as a powerful and popular programming language, renowned for its simplicity and flexibility. However, as Python um, projects become complex, or as projects generally become complex, maintaining clean, scalable, and maintainable code becomes increasingly challenging. This is where solid principles come into play. Solid is an acronym coined by Robert C. Martin representing five essential design patterns. Single responsibility, open and close principle, least curve substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. Understanding and applying these principles allow you to write code that is easier to understand and maintain and also extend. Throughout this video, we will explore each solid principle providing real-world examples and practical insights into how you can apply them in your Python projects. Whether you're a seasoned Python developer looking to enhance your skills or a newcomer eager to learn best practices, this guide is for you. So let's dive in and unlock the secrets of solid principles in Python development. So before we delve into each solid principle individually, I'll list them. Single responsibility principle, open close principle, OCP. Single so let me start again. Single responsibility principle, SLP. Open and close principle, OCP. Least curve substitution principle, LSP. Interface segregation principle, ISP. Dependency inversion principle, DIP. So these principles form the foundation of solid design, guiding us towards writing cleaner, more maintainable code. Now let's explore each principle in detail. So the first principle we're going to talk about, so if we follow solid, S-O-L-I-D, is a single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle states that a class should have only one purpose to change. We can also put it in another term. Each class should have only one responsibility or should only be responsible for doing one thing. Okay, let's take a hammer as an example. Hammers are great for, dividing, for di driving nails into wood, right? But what if that same hammer suddenly had a sharp corner for sawing like the one you see on the screen? It would be confusing and awkward to use, right? And as you can see on the screen, that is quite awkward. Similarly in coding, if a class is meant for one job, if a class that is meant for one job starts doing another unrelated job, it can make your code confusing and complicated to work with. That's why we stick to the single responsibility principle, keeping each class focused on its job, just like holding a hammer for hammering and a saw for sawing. So let's look at, exa look at an example of a code that violates this principle. In this code showing on the screen, the order manages others and sends confirmation emails, violating the SRP, the single responsibility principle. In the long run, when the code base beco becomes more complex, this is going to be difficult to manage. But now let's refactor this code to adhere to the single responsibility principle. Looking at the code on the screen, this has now been refactored to follow the single responsibility principle. So now, by separating the responsibility of sending confirmation emails into the, its class email sender, we adhere to SRP. 
making the code base more straightforward to maintain and modify in the future. Okay, now let's go on to the next um, principle, the open close principle. The open close principle states that classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. This principle encourages us to design our software components so that they can easily be extended to accommodate new features or behaviors without requiring changes to the existing code. Okay, think of the open principle as designing a toy. Imagine you have a toy car, like the one showing on the screen. It's built to allow you to add, add new features, like attaching different accessories or upgrading this engine without altering the car itself. This makes the toy more versatile and adaptable to new ideas while keeping its original design intact. Similarly in coding, the open close principle suggests that classes should be extended. You can add new functionality, but it is closed for modifications, so you don't have to change the existing code. This makes your code more flexible and easier to maintain in the long run. So let's examine a code that validates this principle. In this example showing on the screen, if we want to add a new shape, we must modify the shape class, violating the open close principle. Let's refactor the code to adhere to the open close principle. As you can see on the screen, by creating subclasses like the rectangle and circle um, classes that extend the behavior of the that extends the shape the shape class, like the code on the screen, we adhere to the OCP, allowing for ex easy extension without modifying existing code. So the next thing, the next principle now is the list curve substitution principle. Now let's check that out. The list of substitution principle, which is the third one, emphasizes the importance of maintaining behavioral compatibility between a superclass and a subclass. In other words, any instance of a subclass should be able to seamlessly replace insta instances of a superclass without altering the correctness of the code. When designing class hierarchies, it is crucial to ensure that subclasses adhere to the contract established by the superclass. This means that subclasses will extend rather than contradict the behavior of the superclass. By upholding the LSP, we ensure that polymorphic substitutions can be made safely, enabling greater flexibility and modularity in our code base. Picture a recipe book. Let's say you have a basic recipe book for making a cake. According to the list of um, substitution principle, if you have a fancier recipe for making the same cake, you should be able to use it interchangeably with the basic recipe without messing up the final result. So if you follow the fancier recipe precisely as written, using fancier ingredients or different techniques, you should end up with the same delicious cake. This is, this, the key is that the new recipe keeps the basic recipe's fundamental rules and expectations. Just like what you see on the, on the screen, the cake. You can see the left side is a plain cake, the right side is it is a, a, a more you know a more beautiful cake. But what is inside should be the same. The taste inside should be the same. So that is what it is talking about. So in coding, this principle applies to classes and just subclasses. This means that you should be able to use a subclass wherever you use its superclass without causing errors or unexpected behavior. Just like swapping out one recipe for another shouldn't ruin your cake. Swapping out one class or a subclass shouldn't break your program. So let's see example of a code that violates this principle. In this example, although ostrich is a subclass of bed, it cannot fly, violating LSP. Now, let us refactor this code to adhere to LSP. As you can see on the screen, We've ensured that Ostrich provides a valid implementation of the, of the method fly method. We adhere to the LSP, allowing objects of Ostrich to be used interchangeably with objects of bed without affecting the correctness of the program. Now, let's go on to the next um, principle, which is the interface segregation principle. The interface segregation principle underscores the importance of designing interfaces that are tailored to the specific needs of clients. In essence, it advocates for the creation of fine-grade interfaces that contain 
only the methods required by clients rather than large monolithic interfaces that encompass all possible functionalities. By adhering to ISP, we prevent clients from being burdened with unnecessary dependencies on methods they don't use. This promotes modularity, flexibility, and maintainability in our software systems. As clients are insulated from changes to interfaces that are irrelevant to their needs. Imagine you are at a buffet and only interested in a few specific dishes. The interface segregation principles allow you to pick and choose only the dishes you want without taking everything on the buffet table. So if you only like salad and dessert, you should be free to take a plate with only some dishes on it. Similarly in coding, if a client of a class if, it, if you are a client of a class and only need to use specific methods or features, you shouldn't be forced to depend on a large interface with many methods you won't use. Instead, you just, like, just like the buffet, you should be able to pick and choose only the interface parts you need. This, keep, this keeps things clean and efficient and avoids unnecessary dependencies in your code. Now let's examine a code that violates this principle. In this example, clients of the um, simple printer class are forced to depend on the um, scan document method even though they don't need it violating the ISP. Let's refactor the code to adhere to the ISP. By segregating interfaces into smaller more focused ones like printer and scanner, we adhere to the ISP allowing clients to depend only on the needed methods. The interface segregation um, principle encourages us to break down large monolithic interface in interfaces into smaller, more focused ones that cater to specific client needs. By doing so, we prevent clients from being forced um, to depend on methods that they don't use, promoting modularity, flexibility, and maintainability in our code base. So by adhering to the ISP, we ensure that interfaces are tailored to the precise requirements of clients minimizing unnecessary dependencies and reducing the risk of interface pollution. This allows clients to depend only on the methods they need, thereby simplifying their interactions with the system and making it easier to understand, test and maintain. The next um, principle is dependency inversion principle. The dependency inversion principle states that high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Instead, both should depend on abstractions. Additionally, abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. The dependency inversion principle advocates this decoupling software modules by introducing abstractions, mediating their interactions. Rather than relying on concrete implementations, modules should depend on abstract interfaces or contracts, allowing for greater system flexibility, extensibility, and testability. So by adhering to DIP, we invert the traditional dependency flow, ensuring that high-level modules are not tightly coupled to low-level implementation details. Instead, high-level and low-level modules depend on abstractions, promoting loose coupling and facilitating the substitution of implementations without affecting the system overall. Let's envision a build building a house. In traditional methods, the roof relies directly on the walls of support creating a direct dependency. But what if we flip that concept? Imagine the roof and the walls both depend on a sturdy framework, abstracting away that direct dependency on each other. This way, changes to one component, component won't directly impact the other, fostering flexibility and easier maintenance. In coding, this translates to high-level modules like the roof, not relying on low-level modules like the walls. Instead, both depend on the, a common abstraction like the framework. This promotes a more adaptable and manageable code base where changes in one part don't cascade throughout the system. Let's examine a code that violates this principle. In this example, the other processor class directly depends on the concrete imp implementation email sender, violating the DIP. Let's refactor this code to adhere to the DIP. To the DIP. In the refactored code above, in, in, in the refactored code shown in the, in the, on the screen, we've applied the dependency inversion principle to ensure that high-level modules 
so, such as this other processor do not directly depend on low level modules like email sender. Instead, both modules now depend on a common abstraction, promoting a more adaptable and manageable code base. In conclusion, object oriented design principles are like guiding stars illuminating the path towards cleaner, more maintainable code. By adhering to these principles and ensuring classes have single responsibilities, making code for open for extension but closed for modification, segregating interfaces or inverting dependencies, developers can craft robust, flexible, and easier to understand software. All well-designed building stands the test of time, as does well-designed code. By embracing these principles, developers can create software that meets current needs and adapt gracefully to future challenges. Let's keep this principle in mind as we architect our digital creations, ensuring they stand tall amidst ever-changing landscape of technology.